Hello YouTube. After a couple days where I mainly did videos about particular topics or individual news stories, um, I just wanted to make one today where I kind of catch up on a bunch of smaller stories that I missed over the last couple days. So that is what we're going to do today. You can see a bunch of tabs open already and the links to all these articles will of course be in the description along with social media links for the channel and some ways to support the channel if you would like. But anyways, let's jump into it with a look at the markets today. Now let me just refresh this quickly. I always want to be up to date for these videos. Now I wish I could report that the markets are recovering but unfortunately what we're seeing right now is just sideways movement for the past day and a half and no further losses. Everything very much moving to the side. Bitcoin up 0.28%, Ethereum down 2.8%. That is kind of pain painful. XRP up 0.4%, Bitcoin Cash down 1.2%, EOS up 0.3%. We see pretty much movement under 2% up and down with the exception of a few coins that had some better returns like Dogecoin or Dogecoin and um, Dash. But aside from that, market as a whole very much moving sideways. Bitcoin dominance still extremely high at 54.8%. This not expected to fall until the markets turn into a bull market and all coins will start outperforming Bitcoin again. Market cap at 205 billion, just a bit above the 200 billion that we cracked a couple of weeks ago. Now, my stance has been, has been since I started this channel, <coughs> sorry. My stance has been as long as we're above 200 billion, we shouldn't worry, but we are getting dangerously close there again. And we've been hovering between 203 and 207 billion for two days now. I'm, I'm hopeful we are moving more towards 220 or even back to 240 in the coming days. But the markets don't really seem to follow logic right now. We had um, the news that plunged the markets down was that Goldman Sachs was reportedly scrapping their um, trading desk. And then when it turned out down here that that was fake news, the markets didn't recover. The thing that crashed it down turned out to be fake news and it just stayed down. Now. One of the other reasons it crashed down was also insider trading. Someone was shorting a lot of Bitcoin. So that, of course, gives it more weight than just the news themselves. But still, logically, you would have expected the markets to recover at least by a few percentage points. This has not happened. Also, as I reported yesterday in my last video, XRP got some huge, huge news yesterday. And it's also not reflected in the price. Like I think this tiny little bump might have been it but it's, it's hard to tell, but it, it doesn't look like it did anything to the price, up 0.4%. I guess at least it's not falling, but let's get on with it and let's start looking at some news. First up, yes, Senate, a Senate confirms new pro crypto SEC commissioner. Now the SEC, of course, do, making a lot of important regulatory decisions around cryptocurrencies and most importantly right now dealing with ETFs. And they are about to reconsider their opinion rejecting a few ETFs and they have a new ETF that they have to vote on in the coming weeks as well. This guy Elad Reusman, I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, is um, said to be very pro crypto and might be just what the SEC needs to push any vote towards being positive. Now um, I said before I don't think they will necessarily completely shift gear and um, and retweet on their position about ETFs. But this could be one small step in that direction long term. Now this is a long article with a lot of uh, relevant information. I suggest you read it yourself if you want some more information. But the important point is one more pro crypto voice in the SEC, the most important regulatory body for cryptocurrencies in the United States and um, by extension probably in the world. This will in the long term hopefully be something very good. Now, he's not for completely letting crypto off the rails, but he's definitely more pro-crypto than a lot of um, traditional finance people. And he seems open-minded towards letting crypto pretty much exist with minor regulation. Next up, EOS. Now, EOS has some issues with cost, with how expensive it is to uh, start accounts, and they are, they're taking some steps to, to um, help with that. EOS block producers move to cut costs for users. The EOS blockchain project is hoping to boost the onboarding of new users by reducing the cost of opening accounts. 
EOS New York, one of the network's 21 block producers, announced Thursday that 15 block producers had approved a new protocol update, which reduces cost of a new account from 4 kiki, uh, kibibytes? Kibibytes. Okay. That's supposed to be something else. To roughly 3, which is um, $1.84 dollars. And they are used to measure amounts of data. I actually don't know this um, this um, standard of data measurement, so I can't say anything about how much it actually is. This change also grants new accounts 1,400 bytes of RAM for free. It sounds like they're just talking about kilobytes. <laughs> um, well, existing accounts can buy, delegate, or undelegate RAM to use to receive 1,400 bytes for free. Accounts on the EOS blockchain are necessary for transferring tokens or otherwise launching a transaction on the network. The post further stressed the importance of making account creation easier to bring more decentralized app developers on board in the early adoption phase, explaining EOS account creation cost is an extremely important aspect of the health of the uh, platform. Many users of EOS decentralized applications are early adopters, people who are eager and willing to spend the, future, uh, spend the time to understand the EOS blockchain. But in the future, users will not be as eager. This is a very good point. Right now, dApps or dApps are very much the realm of crypto early adopters, of like um, of strong believers in crypto. But for crypto to take over the way we want it to, we need more just normal average people who don't have a special interest, who don't have a passion for crypto to also adopt them. And decreasing the cost of getting into it is a big step towards that because these people will not be willing to spend a lot of money or time or effort. It will have to be made very simple. And um, right now, one of the biggest things turning people off cryptos, turning people off even just buying Bitcoin, is that um, for some people, it just seems too complicated. And that is because, like, for, for us who are in the crypto world, like, downloading a wallet, maybe tinkering with it to make it work, figuring out how to receive and send, um, and send tokens, uh, all that stuff is second nature. But for, think of people who aren't very technologically minded or who might be technologically minded but have no experience with cryptos, all of this is scary. And uh, in addition to that, it sometimes costs quite a bit to get into things. It takes a lot of time to set things up properly. Anything that makes this easier is a, good, is a step in the right direction for mainstream crypto adoption. Um, same for any, any simple app that you can just install from like your mobile phone app store is a step in the right direction. And right now, I think a lot of like wallet apps and stuff are still too complicated, too clunky. We are, there's be steps in the right direction being done. Like, um, like for desktop computer wallets, like Kraken is about as simple as it will, uh, Kraken, Exodus, I meant Exodus. Kraken, of course, is uh, not a wallet. Exodus is about as simple and as visually appealing and as um, easy to understand as it will ever get. And um, we pretty much need all of crypto to look like that, to be that simple before we can get mainstream adoption. And one step of that is making it cheaper to get into. So this is a good step from EOS. Hope to see more of this. Next up. Ripple General Counsel Access Startup, spokesperson says. Um, this sounds a bit um, worrying from the headline, but I don't think it is. Let's just look at the article. Ripple General Counsel Brinley Ler, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that name, I'm very sorry, has exited the blockchain payment startup, as a spokesperson told Coindesk on Friday. They joined the company in 2016 as its top legal officer, remaining a part of the team for two and a half years. While no reason was provided for her departure, a Ripple spokesperson told Coindesk that her leaving was a mutual decision between her and the firm. Quartz first reported, uh, reported the news. The spokesperson added in a statement, we're grateful to all that she did to help build an incredible team that will continue the work they've been focused on for the little, uh, past year and beyond. We wish her all the best in her next endeavor and the team here at Ripple looks forward to the next chapter where we will continue to pave the way in this ever-evolving and uncharted industry. Prior to joining the firm, she advised fintech companies and led litigation teams and partnered on matters including commercial deals, mergers and acquisitions and intellectual property protection with PayPal and eBay, according to the company Biography. The news comes as Wilbur prepares to fight multiple class action lawsuits claiming the XRP token as a, is a security distributed by the company. As previously reported by Coindesk, a number of investors have sued the company, claiming Wilbur bears some responsibility for the drop in XRP's price over the last year. To help defend it, that's ridiculous by the way, Ripple has brought in some legal heavyweights, including former SEC chair Mary Jo White. 
The company has already won a number of procedural victories with one district court level case being voluntarily dismissed and two superior court level cases being consolidated late last week. However, the company has yet to have a hearing or trial on the Allen Lane claims for any of these suits. Now, anytime you hear about someone leaving a company, especially someone relatively high up in the team, it sounds scary, but um, we have to keep in mind here that Ripple is a tech startup. Ripple is still a very fresh new company, and this is still a very new realm of technology. And what we generally see in the startup world, in the tech world, is a lot of turnover. We see a lot of people moving from company to company and usually only staying anything from one to three years in major positions in any given company before they move on to something else. That is just how, the, how this realm works. So this is nothing to worry about. Um, I wasn't even going to include this news, but I just felt it's, it was important to say that this isn't as dire as it might seem. So if you saw this piece of news and it scared you, don't be scared. There's nothing to worry about. Next up, Opera, uh, Opera's Ethereum wallet now lets you send CryptoKitties to your friends. Opera, of course, one of the biggest players in the browser world. Um, after Firefox, Chrome, and Microsoft's browser software, Opera is pretty much the biggest one. And recently, a crypto company has bought a controlling stake in the company, and they have added a crypto wallet just straight up into their browser. And now they get a new feature. You can now send crypto kitties to your friends. Their announcement. We are big fans of collectibles. They are unique digital things you can own on the blockchain and collect in your wallet. We believe that as an increasing portion of our lives moves online, so will our collections of things. We believe this is only the beginning of this trend and that as technology and usability improves, more online games and other services will adopt such tokens. We also see the possibility for these unique tokens to unlock access to content or verify eligibility for certain digital services. Now their wallet supports EFA and ERC20 tokens already, and now they also support um, collectibles built on top of decentralized apps. This is very good to hear. As I always say, these consumer products, these large products, getting involved with crypto, getting involved with blockchain technology, means more random people that would otherwise not be introduced to the crypto world gain interest in it. And um, even if they don't gain interest in it, just having a bunch of apps in your phone that are all in some way crypto, or crypto integrated will make crypto seem more and more normal, will make it seem more and more like just now a normal pace, uh, a normal part of everyday life. This is how we're turning crypto into Web 3.0. Now, Web 2.0 also wasn't a sudden change where everyone was suddenly adopting it. It was website after website switching over to using Web 2.0 technology and design aesthetics. It was, new, it was a bunch of new websites popping up one by one and slowly and surely the internet was being taken over by Web 2.0. And nowadays, when you see a Web 1.0 page somewhere, you pretty much remark on it. That's how rare it is. And that will happen with blockchain and with crypto. It's happening slowly but surely. Like we see two major browsers now have crypto integration. We have Opera and we have Brave. Brave, uh, Brave just cracked 10 million downloads on mobile and also has a popular um, desktop browser. So we have two big browsers with crypto integration already. We're just waiting for Firefox or for Internet Explorer or for, um, for Chrome to integrate them now. Which is a matter of time. It's a matter of time. Next up. Blockchain being used to save lives amid opioid epidemic. Now, this is also a pretty long article, so I'm not going to read through it. But this is the important part. Industry giant IBM has been working with the US Centers for Disease Control on a data project that could help turn the tide against the opioid crisis. The CDC has been helping IBM build a blockchain-based surveillance system to help hospitals and doctors get information about prescription. The idea is to get data about what types of people are seeking care, as well as understanding how antibiotics and opioids are prescribed. In late April, Bloomberg reported on efforts by Intel and a number of health companies to come up with a blockchain-based system to track where and how drugs leak out of the supply chain. Intel, of course, also a massive tech company. Um, if you have a computer, if you have a game console, if you have a smartphone, there is a relatively high chance that either it is powered by an Intel processor or you have had one powered by an Intel processor in the past. They are a huge company. 
By tracking drugs and medicines from the manufacturer to their final destination, some think it could be much easier to monitor addicted persons heading to multiple doctors for more prescription. This of course can be life-saving, because the way a lot of people overdose is that they, um, you're unlikely to overdose on what one doctor is prescribing you. But what a lot of these um, addicts do is they go to multiple doctors and they get prescriptions from each of them and then they get so many op opioids that they can overdose on them. This would hopefully be able to find red flags to figure out where who is going to multiple doctors getting multiple prescriptions and to stop this and this could realistically save lives. This is using blockchain for good and this is very much something that I'm excited about. According to David Holding, Intel's Director of Healthcare Privacy and Security, this system could vastly reduce the opioid academic. Right now, the duty of tracking prescriptions primarily rests in the hands of state-level monitoring programs, but some people go across state lines to get pills, which complicates the issue. Holding remarked how the end goal would be to get all drug-related companies and suppliers on the blockchain, so regulatory companies could then provide oversight. This type of potential coordination of information has attracted the interest of the FDA, who reportedly is also keen to see how blockchain could be used when it comes to sharing medical records. The ability of the FDA to have access to prescription refill behavior through a blockchain-based database system could give them immense insight into how opioids are being spread through specific communities. Very, very exciting news in my opinion. I do suggest you read the whole article. Um, it goes through some of it goes through some of the stigma around crypto, around crypto um, having been used historically a lot to um, in drug trade, and how does that, that is now turning around, how crypto and blockchain is now being used to save people. And that is, that is beautiful. And that is very good for the public image of the crypto world. That is something we always have to keep in the back of our mind. Every single article, every instance of fraud, of an ICO failing, of too much price volatility puts crypto in a bad light and that means that mainstream adoption gets tougher. That means people are less likely to want to invest in it, that means people are less likely to want to use it. On the contrary, every time we have news like this, we really should be highlighting this, we should be putting this front and center because this is what gets mainstream people more warm on crypto. This is the potential of crypto to do good for the world and I really think we should focus on that. Um, similarly, the other week when Ripple and Madonna raised millions for Malawi together. Like that's the kind of news that we should be putting front and center. Crypto doing good for the world. Next up, in mainstream adoption news, once again, Coursera and Consensus partner to offer a free blockchain course starting today. Now Coursera, if you don't know, Coursera is an online platform where you can take three university level courses on a huge variety of topics. I have taken a bunch of their courses before and they have actually helped me get a job before. They're free courses. So I'm, I'm not trying to advertise them here. This is my personal experience. They're not paying me. I'm not associated with them. But they offer free courses and then you can pay to get a certificate. But even without the certificate, there's a lot you can learn there on a variety of topics. I have taken courses on, on, tech, uh, on technical issues, on uh, technology. I have taken courses on history. I have taken courses on art. And I have taken courses on economics there before. And they are a part of my CV and they have, um, they have helped me get jobs. I have been in interviews where people ask me about those and where I got the job. So Coursera now offering a free, a free blockchain course. I suggest looking into this article and then checking the Coursera website. This is a five week course with a duration of two hours per week. Um, keep in mind, this is just, um, this is what they say, but um, Coursera courses are a combination of video lectures. Um, sometimes they give you reading material. Sometimes they give you tasks to fulfill. Sometimes you have to take online tests and sometimes you have to engage in forums. So how long it really takes every week differs. And sometimes you can do your own time management. You can do everything in the last week or you can do a lot more in the first week. So this isn't like a strict number. Five modules with 30 videos and 20 reading materials created and reviewed by the academic team responsible for the course. And yeah, this is something exciting. And if you want to show Coursera that, you, that people are interested in learning about blockchain, about crypto technologies, sign up for this course. Just, um, it, it can't hurt. And um, 
there's probably something new for you to learn about technology in there. I will definitely sign up for it just, just in case. And last but not least, some more positive news to end this video with. Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong, 1 billion people will be in crypto ecosystem in 5 years. Now, right now, there are 40 million people in the crypto world. He thinks that will go to a billion very soon. Here is what he says. It makes sense that any company out there who has a cap table should have their own token. Every open source project, every charity, potentially every fund, all these new types of decentralized organizations and apps, they're all going to have their own token. And of course, with millions of companies having their own token, that would mean billions of people would be in the crypto world. That is essentially his argument here. He doesn't think the traditional crypto world will grow all that much. But he thinks that there will be a ton of new tokens by tech companies, by startups, and that there will be so many people holding those, being involved in those, that the crypto world will soon have a billion people in it rather than the 40 million right now. That, of course, will raise the market cap like crazy and probably pull all the prices to at least 10 times what they're worth right now, which I'm excited for. I don't know about you. <laughs> but yeah, that's what he said. Full article you can, of course, always read in the description. Now, I, I kept most of these a bit short because I knew I had a lot of topics to get through and I didn't want to make an hour long video. But um, if you want me to make longer videos, let me know in the comments. I think 10 to 25 minutes is kind of a sweet spot. So I'm trying to reach that with most videos. Anyways, I um, also wanted to thank you guys. My channel has grown so much the last like two or three days. Um, I have jumped from 80 to 140 subscribers in two days. Um, thank you. <laughs> This is a bit scary. I have so many people listening to my voice, listening to my opinions about these things now. Um, <laughs> but thanks a lot. Um, I will end this video here. Leave your opinions in the comments as always. Um, let me know what you like, what you didn't like, what you think about these new stories. Um, description has all the links. Description has ways to support the channel and where to find me on social media. And I will see you guys soon.